Good morning. We are thankful to be in the house of the Lord again and to share in this great getting up morning that the Lord has allowed us to see another day. We are pleased and privileged to be able to stand and talk about how good God is to us. But before we've done all that, let us go to the Lord in prayer because he has been just that good. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, how thankful we are for the privilege of being able to stand here in this place, in this worship center, to give you thanks for the things that you have done in our lives. Father, we're thankful because we realized last night could have been uh, all said and done, but you saw fit to wake us up this morning and give us an opportunity to wave our hands just one more time to give you glory. Father, we thank you for the the struggle of our lives because that struggle has brought us to a point of appreciation and thanksgiving because we realize if it had not been for you on our side, we would be lost. We are so thankful for those who have gathered in this place and on our screens to share in God's word. And we ask now in the name of Jesus that you would open our hearts and our minds and our, our, our understanding that we might hear the word and not just be hearers, but the Bible says doers of the word, that we might see you made real in our lives. How thankful we are for this church. We pray now that you might allow us to be a beacon in light in dark places, that we might share the word, word, wherever we go. Bless us as only you can. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are grateful and thankful and privileged to be here to share in this uh, Sunday morning Sunday school lesson. Amen. What another, what a wonderful opportunity uh, when reading the lesson to apply to our own lives and see how God is going to work. We got a tough one today. We got a tough lesson today because James is on our back. Amen. James is telling us that there is some power in the tongue. It, it got, when reading this particular lesson, I got so excited because and when we talked about last week, and when you look at the lessons leading up to this, James teaches us how to be a Christian. He does. He, he teaches us that you don't work because you're mandated to work, but you work because you, you, you're changed in the work. The work comes out of you because who you are. Amen. The work comes out of you because you've accepted Christ. And because Christ is already in the vineyard, you're so excited, you get out there with him. Right. James says, so, 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 so don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. You're not justified by your work. The work is what you do because you've been justified. James corrects that for us. But then he tells us, got to be careful. Got to be careful because there are some problems waiting for you once you're a Christian. Right. Can I pause there for a moment? I'm going to pause there because all of us need to understand it's not easy being a Christian. Okay. Okay. Amen. I, I, listen, my old pastor, old pastor, he used to always tell me, he said, listen, once you accept Christ, once you baptize into the faith, Satan is going to get on your trail. All right. All right. He's going to get on your trail because guess why? He wants to make God a liar. By your example. Oh, Lord, don't use me. I'm not the one to use. Use somebody else. But, but Satan wants to use us as an example. Look, you said there was something good about Rep. Weems. You said you died at Calvary for Rep. Weems. But look at Rep. Weems going to places he should not go. Come on. All right. Come on. Oh, I'm going to send somebody to upset Rep. Weems' life this morning and see if he'll say some four letter words. So then I can accuse you of whatever you're doing for him not being real. James says in this particular text that we got to be careful. And the first place we got to tame is our tongue. Okay. Look, let, 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 let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. Our key scripture for this evening is James chapter 3 verses 1 through 12. Now, if you could, I know you have the Sunday school lesson and it's written in the King James Version. But if you would, let me read the NIV. The NIV just brings that, listen if you don't have it, it just brings it into a, a, a wonderful understanding. I encourage you, when reading the scriptures, get a different version. Read the King James. Our church teaches from the King James, our wonderful pastor teaches from King James. 
But what we try to do is look at all the versions and see what the scriptures really say. In the NIV, it says this. Not many of you should become teachers, mm -hmm. my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Mm -hmm. We all stumble and many fall away. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to stand their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouth of a horse that makes them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Mm -hmm. Or take a ship as an example. Although so large and are driven by the strong winds, they are steered by the very small rudder whereas the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes a great boisterous change. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It's corrupt and can corrupt the whole body. It sets a whole course of one in life on fire, right. and it in, in itself is fire by him. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, uh, sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. Mm -hmm. But no human, look at this, can tame the tongue. <laughs> Man, we, we don't have time to unpack it all, but let us try. James says in these opening texts of the Bible, I wish I could get into the historic factors of this, but we don't have time and we want to press on. But he gives us some indicators. First of all, he says, being a Christian is hard because if you are a Christian is one level. But once you move to the business of God and start teaching, you're held to a higher standard. I wonder if we really believe that, though, today. Yeah. I wonder if we really believe that God is holding us to a higher standard because of places he's called us to. All right. In the old church, we used to have this thing. I'm sure that some churches have it. We have it here, I know. It's called a deacon on trial. You see, a deacon on trial is one whom God had touched the pastor to say this man is a man that can be used in the church by God. Come on, right? Come on. But there was some proving time he had to go through Come on. to make sure his life lined up, to make sure his actions were right, to make sure he could be dependable and counted on. Come on. And, and you know what? Uh, uh, depending on that deacon, that trial could have been six months to two years. Amen. Uh -huh. Depending on how ready he was. Yeah. Now, 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 listen, that what we're talking about is moving from not just being a Christian, but it's moving to a Christian in action. Okay. Being a deacon on trial means that, listen, they're looking and examining me to ensure that I'm one who can move to the next level and take on the responsibility of handling the business of God's church. Come on. It should not be taken on lightly. And James says the same matter is this. If you are a teacher, and you are reading the word, and you are studying the word, then you ought to know better what God is saying. Mm -hmm. And God is holding you accountable. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, look, the scripture says, woe unto him. Uh, listen, we, we, we don't have a lot, a lot of time. But James says, listen, be careful. Because when you're held to that standard, preachers, teachers, Sunday school teachers, but, but, but I, now I'm going to throw some other things in there. Pew members, amen. Choir members, amen. Ushers, amen. We all ought to be held to a higher standard, amen. I always use this example when we're, we're talking. I always use this. My, my mama used to say before I left the house, she said, son, you were my last name, amen. You see, when we represent God, we wear his emblem on our forehead, the red scarlet cross. We wear it on our forehead, and it is the example of who we serve. And because we serve him, uh -huh. our actions ought to be up to par. Uh -huh. Amen. I, I, what we do ought to be up to par. Listen, when a Christian is in trouble, a Christian ought to be one who prays. Uh -huh. 
Come on. Listen, Jack, but James moved further. James moved further. And I got to press off. He says this. He says, listen, when we look at small things that have great power, we can look at, as an example, a horse and the bit we place in the horse's mouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said, with that small bit, we only control the head, but we ultimately control the whole body. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I don't know about y'all, I spent some time on the farm, not much, not, not a few days, not much on the farm, but I don't really like horses because I don't like them looking at me. Amen. That, that, that bothers me when they look at me. I just don't know why. I can see every other part, but I just don't want them looking at me. But I've ridden a couple of horses. Amen. I was on a horse probably a, a, a year ago, and I was out there having me a good time. I almost fell off. But that's another story by the time I tell it. But, but, but what he said was, I, I, he gave me the reins. I hadn't been on in a while. And a friend of mine, I was riding, it's his horse. He gave me the reins. He said, listen. You don't have to pull real hard because this is a trained animal. Okay. I like that. And he said, you don't have to pull real hard. I said, well, how do I get him to do what I need to do? He said, mostly he feels what you want. Ah, man. He said, mostly he feels what you want. He said, listen, if you tug on it a little, he'll, he'll walk backwards. I, I said, no, no, he won't do that. He said, yes. He said, because guess what? That rain tells him what you want him to do. James says, listen, that little bit in his mouth controls that beast that he is. Now, now these animals weigh 500,000 uh, uh, to 1,000 pounds, or even more. And that little bit is able, James is giving us the indication of how important that bit is. How important that bit is. But he also wants us to understand how small the bit is. That little piece. Then he goes further. He said, well, maybe you don't, you ain't been on the farm. You don't understand that. Maybe, maybe you missed that part. But let me tell you this. He said, that big old ship that you see floating in the water has a small rudder that controls the ship. He hits us hard. Thought about the Titanic and how large of a ship it was, the unsinkable ship. And James says, here, listen. That ship that, you're, that the captain is maintaining and, and floating is moved by a small rudder. He said, nothing else controls it. it. It didn't move because of somebody has some magical power to move it either way. He said, it's controlled because of that rudder. All right. He said, it's small, but it is powerful. He brings that into light so that we have an understanding of the last point he's trying to make to us. That the tongue is one of the smallest elements and parts of our body. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But it is powerful. Yes, sir. Yeah. I gotta go, but I'm gonna just go just like this. If you believe and wake up in the morning uh -huh. and you say to yourself, My stomach hurts, uh -huh. five seconds later, four seconds later, three seconds later, your stomach will start to hurt. Uh -huh. The tongue is so powerful. It not affects us only physically, but it will affect us spiritually. Come on, come on, right? James says the tongue is so powerful, it's like fire. Yeah. He said it, fire in a forest only takes a little spark to burn the whole forest. He said, but the tongue is just that powerful. If you pronounce it, then guess what? It will happen in our lives. I'm, I'm going, I'm going. My time is not wrong. But listen, James closes by telling us, if it's that powerful, we ought to tame it and use it for God's glory. Yeah. How do we use it for God's glory? How do we tame this tongue? He says, be careful what you say. Be careful what you do. We ought to use our tongue and our ability to edify God. Edify man, build up, and not destroy because it is just that powerful. I'm going, one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite movies is a movie called The Help. The Maid and The Help. She's an African-American woman and she's caring for some children of another persuasion. And she says here, she says, you are kind, you are smart, and you are beautiful. And, and what she does is she says that throughout the movie. She says, you are kind, 
you are smart and you are beautiful. She says throughout the movie, when she first starts to say, and say, you know, this seems like she's epitomizing this young girl, but, but when you find out, she says, listen, it was my responsibility to raise these children. And when you raise them, you gotta give them what they need. She says, so you are kind, you are smart, and you are beautiful. If it takes me to lift up God, I need to use my tongue to do just that. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, how thankful we are for this privilege of being able to stand in this place and share your word. How thankful we are that you give us the strength to tame any part of our bodies that it might be used for your glory. Maybe there's someone has not accepted you as king and they're having some questions. We pray now that you would put them in a place that they might understand the will of God. But maybe there's a Christian who is dealing with the pressures of life. We pray now that you would give them strength. Father, encourage them. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we ask it all. And everyone said together, amen.
give Jesus a round of applause for him waking us up this morning. If you would share with me in this worship experience. Come on, let's tell the Lord thank you. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I praise you. Amen. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm thankful to be in this place and to share with you. Amen. In the old church, we used to just get it started and say, victory is mine.
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you today for another day's journey. We thank you for watching over us all night last night. As we slumbered and as we slept. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for looking beyond our thoughts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Seeing all of our needs. Just blessing to know that you are a forgiving God. And that you can look beyond our thoughts. In spite of what we do, what we say, where we go, how we talk to people, yet say we are Christians. Yes, sir. And you give us another day. You touched us with your finger of love and allowed our moments to roll on just a little while more. We pray that God would help me today. Preach your word. Someone may come crying, what must I do to be saved? We pray that if I'm too low, that you lift me up. And if I get too high, you bring me down. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Says that 
when even evening was come, yeah. Jesus said unto his disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. Remember, it was Jesus extending the invitation. It was Jesus that knew that the storm was on the agenda. Yeah. And it was Jesus that invites the disciples in spite of the storm between where they are on the other side. He says to them, we are going over, not under, but over to the other side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Lord has extended an invitation to us to go with him to the other side. Uh -huh. In spite of what you encounter while you're going through, the invitation reads, we are going over to the other side side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't know, this too shall pass. This COVID-19 pandemic shall pass. All the trouble that you may be experiencing in your life right now, yeah. read the invitation. It says we are going over. Yeah. Not under, but we are going over to yes, sir. the other yes, sir. side. Yes, sir. My brothers and my sisters, Pastor Hudson, there is not a place on my bookshelves uh -huh. designated for trouble. Uh -huh. There is not a space there set aside for trouble. Uh -huh. And yet trouble will come. Uh -huh. No need of fooling myself or you fooling yourself uh -huh. because trouble will come. Yeah. Romans 5 and 3 says that some things are going to take place in all of our lives. Uh -huh. It says 5 and 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Philippe uh -huh. in the Greek, it means pressure. Meaning for when you are born again, when pressure comes, uh -huh. instead of throwing in the towel, instead of giving up the ship, the writer says, we glory in it. Uh -huh. It don't make much sense to glory in something when it is a heavy load on you. Yeah. But James helps us out. He says when you're going through something, uh -huh. James says count it all joy. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. James 1 and 2 says the reason you have to count it all joy because he says you know something. You can have a life better when you know something. Yeah. The reason why we panic is because we don't know certain things. Come on now. He says, knowing this, that the trial of your faith uh -huh. is getting ready to give birth to another baby. Right. And that baby is called patience. Uh -huh. And the Greek word for patience is hupa mone. Go ahead, sir. Help us. Group of in the Greek, it doesn't help us out or show us patience like we think. Because to us, patience is sitting and waiting. Uh -huh. Patience to us is just waiting to see what is going to happen next. Uh -huh. Hooper means under. Uh -huh. And Monet means to bear. Uh -huh. Which means that patience means to bear under. It means that when I get my load, I don't sit back and have pity parties. Yeah. That I bear my load. Yeah. Because the race is not given to the swift. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nor the battle to the strong. Uh -huh. But rather to them that endures to the end. Well, you see, now any person can't complain. Any person can throw in the tide. Uh -huh. But it takes a real person to bear the load. Uh -huh. I say many times that we say we sing and we preach that the Lord won't put more on us than we can bear. Uh -huh. We need to stop saying that because that's not the truth. Because the Lord will put more on you than what you can bear. Uh -huh. So he can show you that he will bear it for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you can bear it yourself, you will need him. Uh -huh. Is that right? Uh -huh. 
But how many of us know that there are some things in your life you just can't make it through by yourself? But with the help of God, you can do anything. Yeah. Every morning you ought to get up and say, Lord, ain't nothing going to happen today that you can't get me through it. Yeah. I heard people say, me and you, God, can get through it. Yeah. But you can leave me out because God can do it all by himself. Yeah. God can do it without your help. I have asked God myself, why is it that you allow saved folks, born again people, to suffer, to have tribulation, uh -huh. to go through storms and crisis? Lord, why you let this happen to me? Uh -huh. I go to church every Sunday. Uh -huh. I pay my tithes. I love people. Yeah. I give it the best I got. Why do you let stuff happen? To me. Why you let sickness fall in my life? Yeah. Why you let my friends die? Uh -huh. Why you let my loved ones leave me? Uh -huh. But I hear him saying, you don't really know who you are uh -huh. until you are going through something. Yeah. Then you will see what suffering will do for you. Uh -huh. Suffering will develop you. Uh -huh. You see, we are really a diamond in the rough. Yeah. We look good on the surface, uh -huh. but we are not as mature as we think we are. Yeah. You think you are great uh -huh. until you start going through something. Yeah. And when you start going through it, you find yourself getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Uh -huh. Because we try to handle it ourselves. Uh -huh. Suffering and storms will develop us. Uh -huh. But it will also teach us who we are. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, when we experience trouble, it is then that we realize we need Jesus in our lives. On, and after folks get Jesus in their lives, they try to change Jesus. Okay. For example, like when people get married, they try to change their spouse to be what they want them to be. Help us, help us. You see too many folks do the same to Jesus. Uh -huh. When they get Jesus in their lives, they try to change him. They want him to be a prosperity God. Uh -huh. They want him to be the kind of God that if you serve him, you will never get sick. Uh -huh. That if you serve him, you always have a bankroll. Uh -huh. They want him to be the kind of God that if you serve him, everything is going to be a flowery bed of ease. Yeah. No, no, listen, my brothers and sisters, if you're going to take Jesus in your life, uh -huh. you have to take him as he is. Uh -huh. But when you take him as he is, you may have some good days. Uh -huh. yes, sir. But you may also have some bad days. Come on. If you take him as he is, you're going to have some friends. Yeah. But you're going to also have some enemies. Yeah. If you take Jesus as he is, yes, you're going to have some sunshine in your life. Yeah. But you're also going to have some rain. Yeah. If you take Jesus as he is, yeah. you're going to have some roses in your life. Yeah, boy, and you're going to have some thorns in your life. Yeah. If you take Jesus as he is, yeah. you're going to have some divine days. Yeah. And you're going to have some evil days. Yeah. When you take him as he is. As he is. Yeah,
Bible says when Jesus got on board the ship, he went down in the lower section of the ship and went to sleep. Now that's strange because Jesus is sleeping. Isn't that something? Jesus is asleep. Now what Mark was doing, he was paralleling Jesus' humanity with his divinity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that right? And you see, all over the Bible, Jesus places his humanity, humanity and his divinity together to let us know that he is both God and man at the same time. Is that right? Isaiah 9 and 6 says, unto us, a child is born. Help us, baby. That's humanity. And unto us, a son is given. That's divinity. You see, he's human and divine. Like man, he get tired. But like God, he says, come unto me, all you that labor Walk and it, are heavy laden. Walk and I will give you rest. Uh -huh. Like man, he got hungry. Uh -huh. But like God, he's the bread uh -huh. of life. Man, go ahead, Is that right? Yes, sir. Like man, Walk he it, man. wept at the grave of Lazarus. Walk but it, like God, he said, Lazarus, come forth. He received an invitation to go to the wedding at Cana. But like God, he turned water into wine. Like man, he bled on Calvary. But like God, after they buried him, the Bible said he got up the third day morning. Is that right? How many of you know that it is good to have a God that is both human and divine. The Bible says he was tempted at all points, like we are, yet he did not sin. Jesus is down in the lower section of the ship. The Bible says he is sleeping on a pillow. Then a storm shows up. Is that right? Yes, my brothers and my sisters, there are many things in our lives that catches us by surprise. On, so I need to tell you this morning that the storm did not catch Jesus by surprise. Yeah. No, no, it may have caught the disciples by surprise, yeah. but the storm did not catch Jesus by surprise because Jesus knows everything that's coming even before it comes. I stop by to tell you that Jesus knows that the storms are coming in our lives even before they come. Is that right? Yes, sir. Come on. So when I, when I read this, when I first read this, I had a problem with it because it said Jesus knew the storm was coming. And yet he invited the disciples to go with him to the other side. But like me, he would have said to the disciples, he would have gave them some kind of warning. He would have said, I want you to go with me. But when we get in the midst of the sea, we're going to run into a storm. You see, the Lord don't operate like that. Uh -huh. He will tell you some things, but he won't tell you everything. Uh -huh. Because if he tell you everything on the front end, uh -huh. you will never go with him. Uh -huh. Because uh, he won't tell you everything, because if he tell you everything on the front end, you will never go with him. Uh -huh. You see, he didn't tell Moses and Pharaoh, if you leave Egypt, and go to the promised land. Uh -huh. You're going to run into the Red Sea. Yeah. He just said, follow me. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, the Lord won't tell me when I get up in the morning everything I'm going to run into during that day. Yeah. But here's what he says. I need you to know 
He says, I'm going to give you new mercy every morning. Now, new mercy, I ought to give you a hint. New mercy tells me if he's going to give me new mercy, that means he knows I'm going to need it every day of my life. Yes, yes. Matter of fact, he said, listen, you ought to schedule your day one day at a time. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. see, most of us like to plan for the week, uh -huh. for the month, but that's too long for God. Yeah. Don't try to make a weekly plan. Don't try to make a monthly plan. Uh -huh. Don't try to make a yearly plan. Yeah. It ought to be a daily plan. That's why he yeah. says, when you pray, say, give us this day. Yeah. Not this week. Yeah. Not this month. Yeah. But give us this day. Yeah. Yeah. Our daily bread. Yeah. I said, Lord, can I talk to you for a moment? When I write the sermon, I said, I'm getting ready to preach and break in mind about this church on Sunday. Why you don't want to give me enough bread? for the week. Uh -huh. Why you got to give it to me, Lord, every day? Uh -huh. The Lord said, the reason why I want to give it to you every day first so that you have fresh bread in the morning. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Secondly, so that you have my presence every day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I am the bread of life. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. The disciples, you know, when the storm showed up and they went down because they tried to handle the storm by themselves. Uh -huh. You know how we are when you're going through stuff in life. You try your best to handle it yourself. Yeah. You start doing all kinds of things. Uh -huh. You see, these disciples weren't really frightened because they had been in the storms before. Uh -huh. yeah. For they were experienced fishermen. Yeah. How many of you know that for some storms that happen in your life, experience won't be good enough? Yeah. For some storms that happen in your life, uh -huh. you can't get an attorney to handle it. For some storms that handle, for some storms in your life, you can't find a position that got good enough skills to get you out. Yeah. For some storms in your life, your pockets ain't deep enough yeah. to buy your way out. Yeah. For some storms in your life, yeah. your steaming ain't slick enough to get you out of some situations. For some storms in your life, yes, your mother and your father ain't got enough experience to get you through one. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, for some storms in your life, you got to wake up Jesus. Is that right? How many of you know that when things get rough and when your back is against the wall, you got to stop trying to read your horoscope. You got to stop trying to find the answer on the internet. Yeah. You got to stop trying to text somebody. Yeah. You got to find a place to bow down and wake up Jesus. Uh -huh. Is that right? Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. Yes, the sir. thing the disciples had some concern about was that the storm didn't wake up Jesus. Yeah. For Jesus was laying on a pillow. Uh -huh. But when he heard the cry of his disciples, he woke up, and how many of you know that my God can't stand to hear your cry? Can I get a witness? That's what had God to send Moses down to Egypt. Moses said, Lord, why are you sending me? Jesus said, I heard my children's cry. He said, I need you to go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, crying is all right if it's the right kind of cry. The disciples went down and listened to what they said. They say, Master, the Dusk say, in the Greek, which means teacher. He said, Now 
You know when you get nervous, you might say anything, and that's why when you're nervous, you ought to just keep silent. Because you might say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah. They said master, which means teacher. But when you're in the storm, I have to tell you, you don't need a teacher. When you're in the storm, you need a deliverer. Yeah. They should have said curious, which means Lord. But I understand how they messed up because Jesus got so many names. Yeah. Can I name just a few? Yes, sir. In Genesis, he's the seed of a woman. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. Yeah. In Leviticus, he's the sacrificial one. Yeah. In Numbers, he's the uplifted one. Yeah. In Deuteronomy, he is the true prophet. Uh -huh. In Joshua, he's the captain of our salvation. Yeah. Can I pause one time and tell you, this too yeah. shall pass. Yeah. No matter what storms come in your life, yeah. this too shall pass. Yeah. Now, when the storm got worse, uh, the disciples woke up Jesus, yeah. and they asked him a question. They said, Master, uh -huh. perish not yes, that we perish. Yes, sir. One thing the disciples forgot, uh, and can I tell you what it was? They forgot that Jesus was on board. Yeah. You see, Jesus uh, didn't just float on the water. Jesus is so bad he can just walk on the water. Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? You see, water didn't disturb him uh -huh. because he is the well of living water. Yeah, I don't care what you're dealing with, uh, it won't last always. Uh -huh. I don't care what sickness you may have right now. Uh -huh. That sickness won't last forever. Yes, I don't care if your money is low. Uh -huh. I certainly noticed this morning that it won't always be low. Yeah. I don't care what problems you may have right now. Uh -huh. Your problems won't last forever. Yeah. I don't care about the heartaches and the pain you're going through right now. Yes, sir. Your heartaches and your pain won't last forever. Yeah. We may be going through rough times right now. COVID-19 might seem like uh, it will never go away. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you this morning, COVID-19 won't last forever. Yeah. This too shall pass. Oh!
that encourages all of us that no matter what we're going to, this is going to come to pass one day. It's not going to stay. Yes, sir. And, and that if you got Jesus in the boat with you, you're going to make it over. You're not going under, but you're going over. We want to thank our back to give us our final words of uh, 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 benediction and remarks. We want to remind you that that you can also uh, see our weekly announcements on our Facebook page and also you can find out information about our Giftify program where you can, you can give online. You don't have to come by the church. You don't have to mail it off with you. You can do it all in, at your home online. And those of you that, that don't have Facebook, you can send a link where you can view our weekly announcements and also get information about our, our Giftify program. Amen. Again, we want to thank our pastor for, for being with us today. And we, we always rejoice in his presence because just his, just his being here is an encouragement to all of us. So we want to thank you for that. And again, we want to thank Reverend Montgomery for that awesome, awesome, powerful message. If this was baseball, I would say he hit a grand slam. If this was football, he just threw a bomb for a touchdown. If this was basketball, he just, he just hit the winning basket. If this was hockey, he just, he just scored the winning puck. He did, he did it all this morning. So we're going to invite him back to have our closing remarks and give us our benediction. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Reverend Jackson. He always makes you look better than you are when he stands up and talks about you. That's a good thing. It's a very good thing. He's always an encouraging spirit. Amen. Thank the pastor for being here. Look, looking good, ain't he? Amen. Amen. Looking, looking younger than me. I look older than him. That's a pitiful shame, man. I tell you, may we stand, please. Thank y'all for the musicians and everyone that's here uh, participating in the service. Thank you, uh, social media, for looking on. Please continue to bless this church, be with this church, give me finances to this church, help us in these these times. All the members of Greater Miami, don't forget you are members. Stay tuned and stay with us. These we ask in Jesus' name. So may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us hence now and forevermore. And all the people said, Amen.